is the brain divided? That is the question that has driven this man for the last 20 years. Why does it have a divide? Why is it not just a big blob? Like your Maybe skull. Your skull comes together from you know, 32 different bones, and now you've got a fused skull. Okay, and the brain could have done that. It could just gone splush and be a big computer in there, but it isn't. It's divided right down the middle. To find answers, he studied stroke patients who had lost the use of one side of their brain. And when did you have the stroke? Today, scientists know that each side of the brain sees the world very differently. The right hemisphere sees the big picture, an interconnected world of wonders. It delights in people, understands relationships. It understands body language. Without it, creating art would be impossible. If we could imagine its patterns of thought, we would see leaps of intuition, interest, and imagination. But when the left hemisphere is in charge, it sees reality differently. It cannot make connections. It sees the world as separate parts. Details are important, not relationships. For the left hemisphere, things and people are not unique and individual, but groups that it can organize in a world of rules and bureaucracy. Things that can sort and file into a system. It perceives people as body parts, and it doesn't see how they all fit together. This distorted way of seeing reality reminded McGilchrist of something else. Our world. Is there something about how we live in our Western society that may be changing our brains? Is the value of human effort being measured only by a balance sheet? Are the values of the left hemisphere now dominating our brain and influencing how we deal with serious problems? McGilchrist explores these questions in his controversial book. I think The Master of the Emissary was one of the most important books I read in the first decade of, of this century. I can't easily think of another one that had quite such an impact. This book is the most interesting and illuminating book that I've ever read in my entire life. I think there are two options. One option is in 30 years, it could be the Bible of neuroscientists, or it could be forgotten. I think there is nothing in between. Now, McGilchrist is taking his theory on the road. What I'm suggesting is that for evolutionary reasons, the two hemispheres end up paying attention to the world in different ways. This is to do with the problem of survival. We're right at a point where the narrative of the left and the right has crumbled, and it feels like a really important time to be developing a new narrative. He finds critics and allies. Let me show you some brains. I have all kinds. I agree with you completely that our society is completely shifted and skewed to the left, and with that comes the left hemisphere value structure. The left hemisphere manipulates the world. Mm -hmm. The right hemisphere understands the world. I used to give a lecture, the left hemisphere, don't leave home without it. And that summarized the importance I saw. That's where the heavy duty lifting comes for our complex cognitive life. This book is taking a selected set of neuroscience findings and trying to relate them to the uh, clinical psychiatric experience. I'm not comfortable with that. What I want to do is to open minds, not close them down. I don't want to do this left hemisphere thing. Okay, we've got eight bullet points. If we do all these, we'll be okay. Because that's just not the way it is. It, mean, it needs a whole change of heart and mind. And what I want to do is to give people the courage to listen to part of themselves that knows what it is I'm talking about. Ian builds what for me is a totally convincing argument that the specific way that each hemisphere attends to the world shapes our reality. There is truth, there is beauty, there is intellect, there is stuff we should be impassioned about and we shouldn't allow science to go, oh sorry guys, all of that's off the menu. It's not about little things here and there, it's about the whole way we conceive what a human being is, what the world is and what our relationship with it is. For the first time, the divided brain will take you on a mind-altering voyage. You'll never see the world around you in the same way again.